Hey guys, um, welcome to another stream which I just recorded. Still quite haven't got the streaming stuff working yet. But today I wanted to cover adaptive sampling in Blender and how you can use our add-on with that, hopefully, fingers crossed, to get your render times down even further. So if you don't know, Blender 2.9, which I'm going to switch to now, has got adaptive sampling for cycles. So if you're not up unfamiliar what that means, it just means that more samples are used where necessary and less samples are used where they're not as necessary, if that makes sense. Because normally when you use Blender, you set how many samples you want. So I've got the, the mic pan benchmark scene up here and you're probably used to setting how many samples you want and that controls how nice your final render looks so if you've got lots of noise you turn this up and it makes it look nicer but obviously your render times come down and you can you can't really control where those samples are used so for example if you've just got a plain color like this background here um, so long as your scene is relatively well set up so you don't have any tiny point lights in it or any sort of parts of the scene where rays from here might bounce into a very small space and then hit a light but that's a very low chance which will give you fireflies these tend to not need as many samples but obviously when you set 400 like I have it's going to do 400 samples for every pixel in the image um, which you don't really need. You just need it in the noisy areas. Adaptive sampling takes care of that by using some clever trickery, which I won't go into because I don't know much about it, to only use the samples where they're actually needed, where there are noisy parts to the image. So this is a very, very cool feature. And obviously, you know, I'm nuts about trying to get render times down, which is why, you know, I made and Chris and Jeremy and Martin make the CrowdRender add-on, which allows you to use more than one computer to render the same scene. But this is just such a cool feature because it automatically gives you great savings, even without having to use any multiple computing render farm software packages. So I thought it would be cool if we try out and benchmark just the Mike Pan scene with one computer. I've already done one run, so I'm going to stick adaptive samples on, render that, and then I'm going to connect another computer up, and we're going to see how much we can save in total if we use adaptive sampling plus um, two computers versus just one computer by its own. So um, hopefully this is going to help everyone get their render times down. Now this is not going to be a tutorial about how the details of how adaptive sampling works. I just thought I'd show this off and get you guys a bit of a taste of you know, what you can do if you really go all out, use adaptive sampling and more than one computer. So let's see what we can do. This could be fun or it could be terrible. I don't know. I have actually not rehearsed this. Um, I'm not going to edit it. You're just going to watch me try and try and demonstrate using adaptive sampling with multiple computers, and if it works, it works. So it's going to be an interesting video. All right, so this is the first run I've done. So it's three minutes forty-six, and this didn't have adaptive sampling on. So just to give you an idea of what software we're using, so if I bring up the splash screen, you can see that we're using two point nine alpha. You can see the build hash. I downloaded that today. So what's today? The eighth of May. There you go, eighth of May. So you want to follow along at home, you can do. You can just grab this uh, particular build and go from there. So the other thing I'm going to do first before we do the rendering, actually, yeah, I'll do it first, is I'm going to install our add-on because we want to use that as well. So I am going to just choose the next slot in which we're going to do adaptive sampling. And we are going to, in the meantime, just install the add-on and fingers crossed this doesn't crash everything and I have to start all over again. Okay, so I've downloaded the add-on. Um, if you want to download the add-on, you can just go to this URL, discoverycrowdrender.com slash download. If you have an account, you'll just need to log in first. If you don't, you sign up and then you can get the software for free. Now, um, we changed this whole download page because it was causing confusion and that was our fault. Sorry, it caused confusion, everyone. We've changed it so that supporters who you know are paying some amount a month to support the project, um, their builds are here. This is an account I'm using which isn't a supporter account. So most people, when they log in, will see something like this. So the supporter early access builds, which are the latest available builds, cutting or bleeding edge ones, are here. The publicly available ones, which everyone should be able to download, um, are here. And these should work for 2.8 because this is what I'm using right now. So you're going to watch me get this to work. 
with 2.9, hopefully. And drop any comments in the comment section if you want me to do any specific things in the next in the next few videos if you want me to do any demonstrations or deal with any particular bugs and stuff there'll be hopefully a card coming up in the video right now about a common issue with where you set your port numbers up for create render create render needs port numbers um, like you have television channels it talks to other computers it uses ports to do that which are like tv channels and we've found an issue where apparently other services are using those channels and when we try and use them it stops connection from happening so if you're having trouble with connection watch this video right now hopefully i managed to do that okay and there's a card if not check the link in the description below there'll also be a link there okay cool so i've downloaded o22 and i'm going to install it and hopefully it will work so let's do that if not, I'll get it to work and you'll get to watch me troubleshoot it. So this has no crowd render on it at the moment for 2.9. Okay, it installed fine. And now I've got to go start it. So uh, start. Oh, okay. That looks pretty cool. And yeah, it asks for, obviously, because it's using the network, you might get the firewall notification come up. So I just click allow. So make sure you do that. And then I've got to put my password in for this computer. And that should be it working. So we're not going to do this straight away. We are going to first you render. So this was the first time. 3 minutes 46, 38. I don't know what that is. Hundredths of a second, I guess. With no adaptive sampling. This is just Blender 2.9 out of the box. And the settings for that are up here. So 400 anti-aliasing samples, 50% of the screen. So it's kind of different to, I think there's another benchmark where it's set to 1,225 samples. I didn't want this to take too long because I'm pretty sure you would not find it entertaining if I just rendered and you watched my computer slowly render because this is not a fast computer. This one here that I'm working on, it's like an i7, um, but it's only got four cores. It doesn't have hyper-threading, which is a bit strange that it's an i7. It doesn't have hyper-threading, but it's, uh, I guess, the El Cheapo version. So it's not the quickest. It's only got four threads to render with. Okay, so we are going to go back to our render properties panel. We're going to turn on adaptive sampling. Now I'm not going to do anything else because really, um, I guess I want to cater to all the people out there who are not really nerds into how render engines work and want to know about the ins and outs of adaptive sampling. We're just going to look at how it works when you have a, a scene like this and you just turn it on and you don't touch any of the settings because there are other settings in here obviously there's noise threshold minimum samples we're just going to turn it on and see what saving we get so let's do that and i'm just going to make sure i don't overwrite my other time so i'm going to make sure i'm in the right slot which i'm not good job i checked let's do this thing oh yeah now it comes to the most entertaining part everybody where we just watch a computer render so we've got the last frame time up here so we got to beat three minutes 46 and it's looking pretty good it's definitely feels faster and the time remaining suggests that we're gonna get a much better result i've already done this before and i know it does speed things up um but i just wanted to show you guys for reals in front of all our very eyes that this does actually work and you, there's very little effort involved you just turn this thing on and let adaptive samples do its thing Maybe in a future video, we'll really go into all the numbers and do a whole bunch of benchmarking and find out where it's really effective, where it's not so effective. This really is just a out the box, really naive, chuck it on, see if it works. Because good software should do that. And it does. So hats off to all the guys doing the development behind Blender because they've done a good job with adaptive samples. As far as I can tell anyway, because I didn't have any trouble getting it to work. Mind you, this is all CPU rendering. I would really love to hear from other people who have. If you've got a GPU, if you've tried this, let us know how well it works on the GPU or even if it does, because this is all new. It's actually in 2.83, but I decided just to use 2.9 because, I don't know, some other people were using 2.9 and suggest, asked me if it was if um, CrowdRender is compatible with it. So we're about to find out that as well. We're about to find out if it's compatible with 2.9. 
Okay, so one minute 40 to go. It's got about a minute left, which means it looks like it might be a minute faster. It's not bad. It's pretty good, like shaving a minute off your frames, um, especially when the total frame time is 3 minutes 46. is pretty decent. That's I'm going to do a calculation in a minute. I'm not going to embarrass myself at my poor mental maths, but we'll, we'll figure out how much faster that is in percentage terms. And then we'll see how much further we can get the time down if we use another computer also with adaptive sampling. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I really hope our add-on supports adaptive sampling if you change this setting. We'll find out, I guess. Okay, wow, that does feel a lot faster. Okay, there you go. So 2 minutes 29 versus... 3 minutes 46. Okay, so it's two and a half minutes versus nearly four. So what's that? Let's do the proper calculation, shall we? I'm pedantic like that sometimes. Calculator. Let's calculate some stuff. All right. Oh, this is where it gets really embarrassing. I should have done this in a spreadsheet or something. I'm a programmer, not a mental mathematician, that is for sure. So let's turn it into seconds. So we will do this one first. So we've got uh, 120 plus 30, so 150. So let's just call it 150. No. <laughs> Can I use a calculator? Mental challenge. Can James use a calculator? All right, so that's 180 plus 50 to 30. Let's call it 230. Not bad. So yeah, it's about 65% the render time or thereabouts. I'm not going to do the percentage change. That's just the percentage. 150 is 65% of 230. So pretty good. Um, yeah, it's about two thirds the render time, which if it does, if, it, if that scales, so if imagine you had a frame that took an hour and you can shave a third of the time off, that's pretty good. Like shaving the third of the time off is, is pretty good. And one thing to note about, I guess, the mic pan scene is the, it does take a few seconds. Let's just say it takes probably about 10 to 20 seconds, depending on your CPU, for it to start even drawing which is when the adaptive sampling kicks in. So it's probably even a little bit better than that. Um, not a huge amount, but I think the longer your frame time is, the longer the drawing stage, um, you might see a little bit better improvement in this percentage number. But anyway, that's what it does. No multiple machines. So if you find that, oh my gosh, my render times are just out of control and you like the idea of just cutting and cutting a third off that, this is pretty much for free. Um, you just load your project up in 2.9, turn on adaptive samplings, and just give it a give it a go. See how it works. As long as I think your project is in 2.8, I don't think there's going to be many compatibility issues necessarily. I've done this with a relatively simple project though. Mind you, this project is not from 2.8. This is from like 2.7 and it seems to work okay. Mind you, no animation, um, no real fancy other stuff going on like scripts or drivers or any of that stuff so your mileage may vary if you've got a very complicated project then we'll see what happens okay so that's pretty cool right now let's chuck crowd on and add another computer and we will see if we can improve this so i've already got another computer set up it's just not showing itself which is fine. I may not have it logged in, um, but we'll, we'll try connecting to it. So you probably want to, well, I probably want to actually, no, this is me, probably want to tell you a little bit about how this is all set up. So by the power of sketching, I'm going to very quickly show you how I've got things set up. Because I realize I haven't really gone into that in the past and I don't want it to be too confusing. So um, I have in my house, this is my router. So this is where all my networks plug into. And then I've just got two PCs, both of them Windows PCs. And yes, this is very crude. So forgive my drawing. 
we've got one ethernet cable, one ethernet cable, and that's my setup. This is really simple. So this is basically the router that I got from my internet service provider when I bought my internet package, and it's got four um, ethernet ports on the back, and I just plug these two PCs into those two ethernet ports. They become part of my local network now, and I'm currently screencasting from this guy, which is render three PC or whatever it is. And then I've got another computer running Windows 10 as well. So both Windows 10 connected to a network with Ethernet cables. Fairly simple bog standard stuff, just in case you're wondering how we're doing things. All right, moving on. Uh, oh, it's actually active. Cool. So this is the other computer. I didn't see it as active before, but it looks like it's actually okay now. So let's connect to it. There we go, connecting up, syncing. Sync failed. Oh, that's not great. Hmm. Time for me to figure this out. So, guys, if you have had this happen to you, uh, I can sympathize with you now, because now I've got to fix it. Let's just try resyncing. Does that help? Yes. Wow, okay. Well, that was easy. Hopefully, it works for you as well. If you have that issue, hit the old resync button, and maybe you'll get lucky. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding, guys. Um, if you do have issues, uh, we do have a support system with tickets, so you can support it. Uh, you can submit a ticket for free. Obviously, supporters get higher priority, but you, you know, we try and get around to everybody. We're doing most of this stuff in our spare time at the moment, obviously. So we're not miracle workers in terms of how quickly we can get around to you all, but we do have tickets, and they persist in our system, and we try and get through them as fast as we can. So if you do have an issue, check the description below. There'll be a link there for submitting a support request if you're watching this video and hitting resync didn't work for you. There you go. All right, so I guess we should render this now. Hey, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Let's just do the good old naive, stick it in, stick it in top gear and friggin' well floor it. Okay, so that's slot two. That So let's just go through these again. Slot one, no adaptive sampling, no extra computers, three minutes, 46. Slot two, adaptive sampling on, just one computer, two minutes, 29. Slot three, bit of pride on the line here. Uh, let's try and beat that time of two minutes, two and a half minutes. So I will go back here. We've got the two machines synced, so it's going to render on both of those, this computer and the other one. Let's see what happens. Huh, that's interesting. They're not very well balanced, that's for sure. Oh boy. <laughs> Liking it, that's gonna take a while. You know what I might do? You know what I might do? I might just go cancel. Let's just use manual mode. So this is, I guess, an opportunity for me to explain how our software works and how it has some quirks which aren't particularly good. The load balancing works off data that it's learned from previous frames because this is the first frame we've used. It doesn't really have any data and it can do stupid stuff like assign one pixel width worth of the image to render. You can, however, fix that just by coming in here and going, yeah, manual, and from memory, this guy is probably worth about 0.4 of the whole scene, and the other guy 0.6, because the other computer isn't as good. It's an older CPU and not really as crash hot. Okay, let's try again. Slot 3. Let's see what happens. Maybe it'll work better this time. So that's just divided up the screen so that they're sharing it in a way where one's going to get about 60% of the screen, the other one's going to get about 40% of the screen. And hopefully that works out reasonably well balanced. It actually looks like I could have gone 70-30 because this one's still ahead. This is the more modern machine. This is the older one. Not too bad. I think I got it almost right, but... This is something I've just done over time, just guessing it. Manual's really good if you're getting wacky results from just automatic mode. And it's on auto by default when you install it. So if you get sort of like very, very poor render times on the first time you try it, this is probably why. And you can give manual mode a go just to see if you can get a better result. 
you can actually turn, like I could turn manual off right now and if this was an animation render and then it would switch back to automatic but use the results from manual which should hopefully give it better information to use. All of this is going to become irrelevant pretty quickly because we're designing a brand new system which doesn't use this load balancer anymore. So it will hopefully be a heck of a lot better. It'll also give you earlier feedback as well. So you'll see frames come back um, way before the whole frame is finished. So how are we doing for time? Are we going to make it? Is this... Am I going to have to like relinquish my pride? Ooh. I think it's going to be faster. Certainly because we're wasting time now because we're waiting for this other one. So it could have been better balanced. So I might try one more time. Ooh. Well, that's actually better. Considering these these computers are not like exactly the same, so it should not have half the render time. Um, definitely the other PC is clearly weaker because it took way longer to finish and it was only doing 40%. So I might just do one more in slot four. So let's go to slot four and let's go to edit manual. And I'll now give this guy about 0.35. No, no, I won't. Okay, 0.35. There we go. Let's give that a shot. Again, riveting entertainment, James. Making everyone watch a blank screen with numbers flying past. I do my best. I do my best to make this interesting. All I can do at this point is watch and talk, which I'm sure will bore the pants off many people. But hopefully this does give you some idea of what to expect. So if you've never used the system before, um, I'm using the publicly available version 0.2. I'm using Windows 10. I'm using Blender 2.9, which is not out yet. And so far I've managed to get it work without really much trouble at all. So if you are having problems, please let us know. It, there's a chance we can make the software better for everybody if you tell us about issues you're having. And we generally try and respond and work with you to get stuff up and running because we're really passionate about building a, a rendering system that eventually everyone's going to have access to completely for free. Uh, you have access to the publicly available builds for free right now, but obviously we're building a new system that's in early access for all the supporters because they are supporting us. So we wanted to give them something um, in return. And eventually, hopefully, this will be open source and freely available like Blender is. Um, we're not there yet, though, so please be patient with us. We're getting there. So you can check out our support, uh, sorry, our support, our development fund, which is a similar idea to Blender. Again, link in the description below. Okay, how did we do? Did we do any better? 10 seconds better or thereabouts. Let's have a look. So 3 minutes 46. No adaptive sampling, one machine. 2 minutes 29, adaptive sampling. 1 minute 51, first go, not particularly well balanced. 1 minute 39, bit better balanced. That's with, that's with adaptive sampling on as well, I think. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn adaptive sampling off and see what we can do with a reasonably well balanced system in CrowdRender. Okay, synced. So if I turn adaptive sampling on and off, even in version 0.2.2, it synchronizes that change. So the other node will have turned its adaptive sampling off as well, which means you don't have like this weird hybrid system. Although if, to be honest, if it didn't turn it off or on, um, at least it will still render, although it might be faster or slower than you expect it to be. So I'm just going to hit render still again. This is going to take a little bit longer, but again, I'm just... I'm keen to just see how this stuff works and hopefully you guys are as well. Hopefully you're curious about how you can get your render times down. I'm keen to see how our publicly available software performs with 2.9 for the first time. This is the first time I've ever used it. So with 2.9 that is. So it's been really uh, relieving and cool to see that it's worked pretty much first go. Albeit it did have that sync failure out of the box, but it seemed that resynchronizing fixed that straight away. So, come on. So, what are we going to get? We're going to get. 
I don't know, two minutes? Maybe we'll get, it looks like it could end up being a similar time to adaptive sampling on its own. It's very, very relieving <laughs> that we actually get even more speed if we use two computers, because we definitely should. But it's also pretty cool to see how much time adaptive sampling saves. So maybe in the next video we'll look at um, really pushing the limits of adaptive sampling and seeing how much time we can actually save when we start tweaking it, because I'm pretty sure there's a little bit more we could do because we've got settings for how much noise we're okay with. We could also chuck the denoising uh, node in there, the optics denoising. That would be wicked because then we could use even less samples. So I'd be really keen to see how far down we could push this scene. I'm not going to do that today because I want it just to be short and I want to experiment a bit as well because the last thing you guys want to do is sit through like a hundred renders of me tweaking and tuning. But I think that's the next thing I'll do is play around for a bit and then show you guys how you can really drive the render times down using multiple computers, multiple computers, if my mouth will cooperate, and adaptive sampling and denoising. It'd also be nice if we could get a GPU as well uh, here in the office so I can experiment with GPUs, but I don't have one at the moment. Kind of going to have to save up for quite a while. I think COVID has stopped supply and that's caused prices to go up a wee bit. So it's not going to be anytime soon, unfortunately. Okay. Ooh, two minutes 30. Are we going to get two minutes 30? No, we're going to go over because it's slightly imbalanced. So, ah, oh man, it's similar. Let me just say it's similar. Yeah, two minutes 40. So two minutes 29 adaptive sampling on one node and then two minutes 40 using two computers so it is a fairly similar um, time bearing in mind that my second computer is not as powerful as my master so you know master being this one where i'm actually controlling everything from uh, it'd be nice to have three or four computers active because then we could really crunch the numbers down a bit but there you go i hope that's been interesting so we've looked at adaptive sampling and it seems to work pretty well out of the box but uh, I'm going to keep this video short because I don't want to drag on too much. I'd like to come back and explore it more with you guys um, when I know a little bit more about how adaptive sampling works. And next time we might use version 0.2.6. So that is the currently available version for in early access because this supports denoising, um, whereas this one does not. However, I am going to do my usual plug of our development fund. Because, like I said, we do want to have keep this software project free for everybody. So we don't want to release a brand new system and then just go back to the age-old model of um, selling the software. We kind of like the whole development fund thing that Blender's got going. It seems like a, a really nice model because everyone can have a go then. Everyone gets access to it. So here's the development fund. I've got to update this, but it's still about sort of 800. And we wanted to get to this point where we can start unlocking some of these builds which would be really, really cool. Um, again, this is just, we want to make sure eventually the whole thing is available for free. I have to update this because this information, I don't think it's particularly helpful. I don't, I did it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to change it because I want you guys to have uh, certainty about what we're doing. So the idea about this is the target here is me working part-time because at the moment I don't, I work on this project completely for free, but it'd be really awesome if we could hire the whole team back. So that'd be me, Jeremy, Chris, maybe Martin part-time, if we could do that. Um, so we're working towards getting the development team working on this project full-time. So that's what our development fund is about. And as we get more and more uh, funding, we want to obviously unlock more and more of the software because there are obviously improvements in these builds. And you can also now, I think, click on these and they should bring up the changes. It's not a change log, but it's just a brief description about them. So like, like I said, we've made some changes to the website, which are hopefully pleasing. So you can sign up, you can get access to the latest, uh, latest early access builds, not the freely available ones. Um, we've changed this website to be a, like the downloads page to be a little bit more clear to read. Hopefully it is. Again, drop us a comment. If it's miss, 
I wouldn't want to use the word misleading, but if it's not clear or if you think it's misleading, then yeah, sure. Let us know because we, we changed this whole layout because someone basically said, hey, um, you say your software is free, but then I can't download the latest build for 2.8. Um, there it is. We've made it hopefully clear for you guys to be able to see it. And if you like what we're doing, if you're into the idea of this becoming, you know, the, I suppose, the render farm equivalent of Blender, because that's what we would like it to be, then yeah, sign up and support us. You'll be joining, you know, 150 odd people, if you count the $4 subs plus the 10 and all the rest of it, who really believe in what we're doing and have been supporting us since, I think, December last year. So that would be awesome. We'd love your support. Tell us what you think of the videos, guys. I want to keep doing them. I'm going to start doing some live streaming. For the people who do sign up, there'll be some exclusive live streams, uh, which will give you the chance to obviously ask questions. They'll be on some uh, advanced topics and also get your opinions and thoughts on the new software, which we'll be demonstrating. And that's pretty much all I have. So hope you liked it. Please like, share, and subscribe because that really helps. Your voice, if you like what we're doing, counts a hell of a lot more than ours because obviously we are the people behind this project. We can shout all we like about how great we think it is, but if someone else, i.e. you guys, tell other people how great it is, your voice actually speaks louder than ours ever could. So really appreciate all the support we've been getting from people who've been sharing on Twitter, Facebook, um, or just telling friends through whatever medium you feel is appropriate. So thanks to all those guys. Thanks to all our supporters who are on this page. I've already given them a plug and a thank you video, but I think you guys deserve another thanks. So go and check out our, do our donation page. There's some awesome people's names on there who are supporting it. And that's pretty much all I got for today. So see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.